At the time of recording this video, it's almost Christmas time, and I wonder how many of you out there might be getting a brand new audio interface. It doesn't matter if it's an affordable, cheap audio interface, it doesn't matter if it's USB, Firewire, or Thunderbolt, there are certain concepts that you really need to be aware of because when I started out using my audio box from PreSonus, I had no idea what I was doing. I was just turning knobs, trying to get recording on the computer. What I realized is that all my recordings, no matter what I did, no matter what microphone I used, they all just sounded really noisy. And by noisy, I mean it sounded something like this. Well, in today's video, I've got good news for you. It doesn't matter what type of audio interface you have, there is something called a gain knob. You may have a physical gain knob on the front of your device, or it may be something you control through software. Either way, it's super important you know how to use the gain knob when you're recording. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can get the most out of your audio interface to make it sound as good as it can, and maybe even improve the quality of your recordings by avoiding this trap that everyone falls into at some point. My name is Chris Green. My whole channel is about music production. So if this is something that you're interested in, you can expect a lot of videos just like this from me. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button and check out some of the other videos here on my channel as you have the time. If you're already subscribed, hit the like button. That helps push this video out to even more people on the internet. Thanks again for watching. Let's get started with trying to make our audio interfaces sound as good as they can. So for today's video, I thought it'd be fun if I used the Sapphire Pro 40. This is an actual really old audio interface. And by really old, I mean it's like 2008. But I actually use this when I'm recording drums. It's got eight microphone preamps on the audio interface, two on the front, and then the other six are on the back of the device. We're only gonna be concerned with channel one. And like I said, it doesn't matter what audio interface you're using, the concept is going to apply. So I have in my hand a Shure SM57, one of the most popular, probably the most popular microphone to use when recording. I'm just gonna take a standard microphone cable, nothing fancy about it. I'm gonna take this and plug it into channel one of my audio interface. Now, you're gonna be hearing my lapel mic, which is actually underneath my shirt for most of this video. You'll see on the screen if I ever switch to the audio from the SM57. We'll get to that in just a little bit. On the screen, you're gonna see PreSonus Studio One. This is my digital audio workstation or DAW. It doesn't matter if you're using Pro Tools, Ableton, Logic, GarageBand. They're all pretty much gonna work in similar ways. When I open up the mix window, I actually have a section for input monitoring. So right here, you can see all across the bottom, these are the inputs I have available on my audio interfaces, because I'm actually running two right now. Now let's take a look at the front of my audio interface, and you'll find some features that are gonna be similar no matter what interface you might be using. On the Sapphire Pro 40, I've got my microphone plugged into channel one. And right now, channel one's gain pot is all the way at zero. So as you can see on the screen, we are getting little to nothing. If I tap the microphone with my finger, as you can see, there is a crazy healthy signal coming in, even with the gain knob all the way down. This comes in a lot when you're recording drums. I mentioned this in my drum recording video that I love using the Sapphire Pro 40 because I actually don't have to depend on the Sapphire Pro 40 to give me a lot of gain on my microphones. As you can see, if I tap this SM57, we're getting a pretty healthy signal. Now, I would never want you to record an SM57 by hitting it with a stick or with your finger, but let's just say that for this video, I'm talking into the microphone. You are hearing right now the lapel mic that's underneath my shirt, but take a look at the screen on channel one of my ADAT. As I turn this gain volume up and I'm talking into the microphone, you can see more and more of a signal coming up. Now I'm about 100% on the gain knob for the Sapphire Pro 40. And when I'm at 100%, what you can clearly see is I am clipping this audio signal. You do not want to clip your recordings. Clipping means you have got too much of a signal going into your microphone. This comes up a lot when you're recording drums, but if I'm just speaking into this microphone and I'm clipping, that is very bad. The main thing for this video that I want you to notice is with the gain knob all the way up on my Sapphire Pro 40, if I stop talking, look at the signal that's coming in through the microphone. At the upper end of the frequencies where my mouse is on the screen, you'll notice that the upper frequencies, they kind of slope 
upward. It's a very unnatural looking frequency because there is noise in my room. There is a PC running, but this slope that you see going up as the treble frequencies get higher, you see this slope going up. That is actually the noise coming from the preamp. That is the noise coming from my gain knob being so high on the audio interface. So I'm going to stop talking again and look at the screen and I'm going to use my mouse to point out these high frequencies. That signal is known as noise. Right, that is what is called noise. Now let's adjust this microphone so that we're not clipping anymore. So if I'm gonna be speaking into this microphone, I'm gonna turn this gain knob down. Right now it's at 100%. Let's turn it down and see at what point we can get it just in between negative 12 and negative 24. Testing one, two, testing one, two, test one, two. So now I've got the gain knob on my Sapphire Pro 40. It's still too high. It's at about 80%. Let's take a look at the Spectrum Analyzer without me talking, and let's see how loud our noise floor is now. As you can see, the noise is still there. I can visually see it without even having to listen to what's going on. But the problem is it's still there. So what do we do in this situation? I always recommend that when you're recording, whatever you're recording, whether it's vocals, drums, snare drums, saxophone, keyboard, try to aim for negative 12 and negative 24 on this metering. So the loudest that I'm gonna speak is about negative 12, and then my normal speaking volume is hovering around negative 24. This is an an ideal place for me to be recording signals in PreSonus Studio One. But it's not ideal when it comes to this audio interface. This Sapphire Pro 40 is way too high. Ideally, I want my gain knob to be as low as possible for something like speaking, because audio interfaces that rely on USB, Firewire, or Thunderbolt, they're gonna have a lot of noise inherently involved because they're not only amplifying the microphone volume, they are also interacting with the computer. Something I've learned from all the different audio interfaces I've owned is that whenever you have these more affordable audio interfaces, you want to try to be below 50% as much as possible. Something happens when the gain knob is this high where you start hearing significantly more noise. So what do you do when you need more preamp gain? Well, there's this device called the Cloud Lifter, okay? I've owned this Cloud Lifter many, many years. I got it when I got my Shure SM7B. What it does is it states that it adds 10 decibels of clean gain to your signal. So I've got my SM57 here. Instead of my SM57 going straight into the interface, I'm actually gonna plug it straight into the cloud lifter. I'm gonna use another microphone cable coming out of the cloud lifter and into my Sapphire Pro 40 channel one. The only way for the cloud lifter to work is it needs 48 volt phantom power. So if you have an audio interface like the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2, any of these more affordable ones, they should have 48 volt or what's called phantom power switch. On this Sapphire Pro 40, we have it right on the front. And as you can see on the screen, as soon as I engage the 48 volt phantom power, we get much more signal coming in with the gain knob being significantly lower. So if I'm talking into this microphone right now, Test one, two, test one, two, test, 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 test one, two, test one, two. Now my gain knob, Sapphire Pro 40, is only at about 40%. And let's take a look on the screen to what happens to the noise coming from the preamp. Just as a reference, if I took this gain knob and I turned it back up to where it was, about 70, 80%, I'm not only clipping now, but if I'm silent, that is the noise we were dealing with. So again, I can still be more conservative with this preamp. If I'm speaking into the microphone, test one, two, test one, two. I wanna be hovering somewhere between negative 12 and negative 24, test one, two, test one, two. Here is our signal again. Let's take a look on the screen.
that signal looks a lot better. Now, any other sort of noises that we're having, those might be inherent to the room that you're in. Like I said, I have a desktop computer that's immediately beneath the Sapphire Pro 40. There are studio lights in this room. And then I'm also holding the microphone in my hand. If you're using a shock mount, there are so many other variables that come into play. But just know these gain knobs that are on these audio interfaces, if you can get your gain knob to stay below 50%, you should be in a really good spot. Different people are gonna have different voices. They're gonna project at different volumes. People are not all gonna hit the snare drum at the same volume, so you need to adjust it. There's no one set it and forget it setting, but hopefully using this method, whether it's using a cloud lifter or just being aware of some of the signal coming into your computer, I want you to be aware of the noise coming from your preamp. You could have noises coming from the microphone itself. You could have noise coming from the microphone cable. There are all sorts of variables that are at work, but when you have an audio interface like this, try to keep that gain knob below 50% if you can. If you've got to turn it up above 50%, that's gonna be okay. But just be aware that as you turn the gain knob up on the affordable interfaces, you're gonna have a little bit more noise coming from the preamp. I hope you have a lot of fun in your recordings. Hopefully this helps you out just a little bit. And if you'll hit the subscribe button and like button, that'll go a long way to support the channel. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you at the next video.